السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوت الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علیہ سیدنا و نبینا ابلقاسم المصطفیٰ محمد و علی آلہ طیبین طاہرین راسی ما بقیت اللہ فلاردین اجل اللہ تعالی فرجه الشریف و جعلنا من اعواله و انصاره سلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ It's uh, my great pleasure to be with you today and be part of this important event. This is an event organized by the UK branch of RMA, Revert Muslim Association, which normally meet every year in North America. And I had pleasure of attending one of their conferences in person and the one last year via Skype. So now Islamic Center of England is pleased to host this event of RMA, which is organized by the UK branch. And I hope that inshallah, this organization and similar organizations which would uh, help our community, whether it be revert Muslims or born Muslims, to flourish more and to be able, inshallah, to spread their services and their networking to all over the world. The conference is organized by RMA, but it's not just for the reverts. It's for all of us to reflect on two important issues, identity and community. And after careful consideration, I think it will become clear that they are not two separate issues. In proper understanding of our identity, we realize that part of our identity is formed by our belonging to our community. Our belonging to our community is not something marginal, it's not something accidental, it's a very substantial part of our identity. And therefore, to be able to appreciate better and acknowledge better our Muslim identity, we need to strengthen our ties with other members of the community. So this is something that I think uh, we should always remember. And in my understanding, there is no way to be a good person or a good Muslim without being a very active and helpful and supportive member of the community. The way we relate to each other, the way we support each other, the way we show our sympathy to each other is very much part of our own self-identity. Uh, what I would like to share with you today in this beginning of the conference is some reflections on the issue of identity and community. But I'm sure you agree with me that this is something that you cannot do justice in one lecture. We need actually a course on what is Islamic identity, how we can build and strengthen our identity. But just some reflections, and inshallah, other brothers and sisters who are going to speak, who are going to run workshops, and more also your own comments would make this discussion, inshallah, better develop. So I'm just trying my best, inshallah, to have few reflections. One of the things is that we have to remember whenever we talk about identity is that it's part of human nature and it's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually for us that unlike animals or if it is not disrespectful unlike other animals because in a sense we are also animals 
we have been given the ability to have some kind of self-understanding and self-consciousness. If animals have some sorts of understanding, it's mostly geared towards the way they can relate to the environment without them being able to come up with universal concepts, with understanding about future or past, with planning, and also, I think, without having deep understanding of themselves. It's not that, for example, a cat or dog can reflect on the way he or she has been or, you know, about the future plans, about shortcomings, about, you know, what should I do to become a better cat or better dog. Actually, to be a better cat or better dog doesn't mean that much. It's a very limited area. But when it comes to human beings, our understanding of ourselves is very important. And the more you develop in your humanity and the more thoughtful you become, this understanding becomes more important for you. The people who are very careful about their spirituality, the people who are very careful about the way they have been serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think actually this is one of the most, if not the most important topics that they always think about it, about themselves. Monitoring yourself and then assessing yourself, if needed, disciplining, blaming yourself, or praising yourself, all these different techniques that we learn in akhlaq in the form of muhasaba, musharata, mu'aqaba, muraqaba, these are all related to the way that you can try to improve yourself. So it's very important for us to be able to first understand what I am, who am I, and how I can be better. How can I improve myself? This is very important, especially when we want to be able to understand ourselves as not just individuals, but also as members of an organic system. One of the things that we have to remember is that in Islamic understanding of identity, we as individuals are not the complete picture, are not the complete truth. You know, I give you an example. For example, if you have a building and you have ceiling of the building or windows of the building, one way of understanding this is to understand the ceiling or the window just as it is without any connection to the rest of the building. This is one way of understanding it. But I am sure you agree that this would not be able to tell you exactly what is the ceiling. If you just talk about the material and the design, internal design of the ceiling without connection to the rest of the building and what function this has to have to support, to help, to develop, to perfect the whole building, you would not be able to understand what is the ceiling. Or if in a car we just study and talk about, for example, I don't know, the wheel, but without remembering that this is the wheel for a car in connection with the engine, the brake and whatever, the, uh, 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 the brake, then you would not understand what is the wheel. So we human beings, unless we are taken as part of a system, as a member of a community, as a cell in an organic body, we have not understood ourselves and we have not understood other people, especially when it comes to Islam, which I'm going inshallah to explain later. This is some introductory remark about identity, but inshallah, maybe later we can develop this further if time permits. In the Quran, what we find is that 
self consciousness is very very important and unfortunately people go sometimes through different conditions which all of them are unhealthy which all of them show and indicate a lack of having proper understanding of themselves i use few quranic concepts and notions and i'm sure you are familiar with this but maybe to have them all together is something that we need very much now sometimes the quran talks about the people who have forgotten themselves there are people that they don't remember themselves allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la takunu kal ladhina nasallaha fa ansahum anfusahum oh those who believe do not be like the people who forgot allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then allah made them forget themselves it means that it's a necessary consequence and outcome of forgetting your lord that you forget yourself so we have something called forgetting yourself this is not like people who have alzheimer who forget their name no it's something that can happen to very active and successful scholars scientists businessmen it's not like alzheimer it's something much deeper than that it's when a person runs his or her daily life very actively but has no time and no attention and no sense of who am i and what am i this is very much happening to us if we forget the main source of our pride honor and value which is connection to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes i use this example i say if we have a radio and this radio is switched off so still as a physical object the radio is there you can look at it you can touch it but this radio when it is switched off and it's not connected to the radio station is just one percent useful and maybe even it's useless but the maximum is as a heavy object you can use it you know to put it on something or put something on it but a radio without connection is not useful a human being without connection to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not that valuable and is not able to understand himself or herself this is nesyan on nafs this is forgetting ourselves sometimes unfortunately we are so busy with everything which is happening around that we have no time to think about ourselves we don't have no time to think about my own problems or my own potentials i'm just busy with sorting out everything outside and we should remember and this is a great lesson that all the prophets and imams and holy leaders have taught us there is no way to fix the world around without fixing the world inside it's impossible even if there is injustice outside if there is corruption outside there is poverty outside there is ignorance outside there is illness outside and you want to sort out the problems outside you have to also sort out the problem inside so without having proper understanding of yourself no matter how much you know the world outside you would not be completely successful and sometimes indeed you may become yourself part of the problem there are many people who start sorting out the problems outside but they, they themselves become part of the problem and sometimes they become bigger problem because there was no care of themselves and their purity and their intention so this is one important concept which shows and indicates lack of understanding of one's identity forgetting yourself the quran also talks out about something which maybe we can call it 
distancing yourself from yourself. It's possible that we sometimes, unfortunately, are not where we are supposed to be. We distance ourselves from ourselves. The Quran talks about this in the way which we can reflect and come up with this concept. What the Quran says is this. Raja'u ila anfusihim. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the story of Prophet Ibrahim, Allah nabiyyina wa alihi wa alihi salam, and the idols, and when the idols were broken, and there was a discussion, who destroyed the idols? So, it was said by Prophet Ibrahim as a suggestion, something compatible with their system of thought, that maybe the bigger idol has done this. But then they said, this is a statue. How can he do anything? And then a time came that they woke up. If this statue cannot do anything in a matter of one meter or two meters, so how can this statue then run the whole world? Because those idols were all close to each other. If none of them can bring any harm to another statue two meters or one meter away, so how can he be benefiting me or harming me in the whole world? Then the Quran says, Raja'u ila anfusihim. They returned to themselves. What does it mean they returned to themselves? Maybe sometime you have read this, but you didn't really reflect on the point. Return to themselves. What does it mean? It means that sometimes we are in a state that we distance ourselves from ourselves by not understanding, by not thinking, by not reflecting on what we do and what we believe. It's like a person who leaves his house or house empty and doesn't know what is happening there. When goes back to house, there is robbery. Or I don't know, there was you know, water leakage. The whole house is damp. We human beings have this potential that we can, not physically, but we can psychologically, mentally, intellectually, spiritually, leave ourselves and go away not knowing what is happening to ourselves. We need someone to take us back to ourselves. We need a reminder, we need a warner who says, look, it seems you don't know what you have done to yourself. It seems you don't know what you believe in. And then, if we get the lesson, then we can say, I would like to return to myself. So sometimes people forget themselves, sometimes people leave aside themselves, sometimes people, as the Quran says, lose themselves. This is also a very beautiful Quranic concept. Khasiru anfusahum. They lost themselves. You know, we can have different types of loss. Sometimes I lose my money, my belonging. I lose my car, I lose, I don't know, my phone, I lose my laptop, I lose my money, I lose my passport. So this is one way of losing things. Sometimes I lose my friends. Sometimes I lose my family members. Sometimes I lose my job. Sometimes I lose my memory. But one of the worst types of loss is to lose yourself. It's the most maybe tragic way of losing something, and that is to lose yourself. Like what? Like, for example, if you have a plane in the air which has lost control, 
no connection, no pilot, no direction, definitely is going to fall, it's going to collapse. If we human beings lose ourselves, then we become not only useless, we become actually very harmful. So, a very active, vibrant understanding of ourselves is what we need in order to safeguard ourselves against forgetting ourselves, being distanced from ourselves, and losing ourselves. Another thing that the Quran also tells us is that unfortunately we human beings also are subject to another mistake and that is to lose our direction. All the things that I have said so far, maybe you can take it in a static way. Of course, I don't think they are static, but maybe some people think it's static, but this one is very dynamic because we are always in motion. We are always in transition. We are not fixed. Even for one day, we are not fixed. We are going through different stages. Especially if you believe in Mullah Sadra's idea of substantial motion, so we are substantially changing. And what keeps us the same person is that there is the same subject which is going through these changes. But if in this process of change, we lose the direction, this is another big danger. Like a person who has filled the tank of the car, it's full of petrol. The car is working, he's driving very fast, but he doesn't know where he's going. What is going to happen to this person? If he doesn't know where he's going, maybe he's just distancing himself from the destination. And maybe in the middle of a desert, when there is no one, no help, no station, he goes, he runs out of petrol, or he becomes too sleepy, and then he may lose his life without food, or I don't know, being attacked by animals, or so on and so forth. So, it's very important for us, as dynamic beings, to always remember our directions. And again, this direction for us cannot be understood without knowing our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This direction for us cannot be understood without knowing the fellow travelers. I am coming to the issue of community, so please bear this in mind. When we are traveling, sometimes we are traveling alone, sometimes we are traveling in a group. When you go to, for example, Hajj, imagine if a person goes to Hajj and then doesn't know where to go or loses his caravan, his group, his leader, his guide, and other fellow Hajjis. What is going to happen to this person in those very, very busy and crowded, you know, time and places, hot weather. Sometimes, you know, if you are just maybe two hours outside and you cannot find your place, it's enough to have big health issues. So we need to know the destination. We need to know the people with whom we can travel, either as guide or as fellow travelers. And everything like this, can be understood from the Quran. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man yuta'illaha wa rasul fa'ulaika ma'alladheena an'ama Allahu alayhim minan nabiyyeen wa shuhada wa siddiqeen wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa. Those who obey Allah and the Prophet, they would be with the people who are prophets, witnesses, righteous people, most truthful people, and they are good Rafiq. Who is Rafiq? Rafiq is a person who comes with you, who travels with you, and is very kind and considerate. He is 
showing refq, he's showing moderation, he's showing sympathy and kindness to you. But this is a leadership level. These four people, four groups of people, these are the people that travel with you, but as leaders. And then you have other mu'minin who also travel with you as your fellow travelers. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places emphasizes on having taqwa and at the same time be in company of good people. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Although taqwa is something that can be taken in a sense an indication of everything that we need but to have this taqwa you have to make sure that you have good people around you have good associations you are with the people who are good or for example all another ayah which is very important for our discussion and i would like all of us to reflect on this ayah later is this beautiful ayah from surah al imran verse 200 a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu asbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu wa attaqullah la'allakum tuflihun this ayah is something that we need very much today. Maybe we Muslims today in the 21st century need this ayah more than any time else. All those who believe, be patient. Esperu. We need patience. What is patience? Some people think patience means just to sit and relax. Let things happen, and when everything is sorted out, you come and enjoy. This is not sabr. Sabr in Quranic understanding is the condition of a person who is very actively involved in bringing good changes to his life, to the society, but faces difficulties. Patience means not to give up. Patience means not to give in. Patience is not to become despaired. Patience means not to become depressed. Patience is to remain active. And this is why you see sometimes Quran says, Mujahideen should have patience. Those who struggle, they should have patience. Patience is not for a person who is just sitting at home or you know, enjoying his life or family life and waiting for other people to sort out the problems. So, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sbiru means in your active, in your active life, remain persistent, don't lose your patience, and keep carry on. But, wasabiru. You need also to be patient as a team, in a collective way, if I lose my patience, you need to remind me. You need to help me. If you lose your patience, I need to help you. So we as a group, as a team, try to keep our patience. You know, if for example, if you have a football team, okay? The success of team depends on all members of the team working. Not some of them, you know, go to holidays. Some of them, you know, have break. All have to work. A time comes that maybe more pressure comes on part of the team. Maybe our defense now has lots of pressure. So the rest of the team now should support where more pressure is coming. As a community, we have to be very alert. See who is suffering more. Who is facing more challenges? Sometimes our leaders face lots of challenges. Sometimes, I don't know, our families. Sometimes our maybe new Muslim brothers and sisters. Sometimes maybe our youth. Sometimes maybe our teenagers. Sometimes maybe our teachers. We have to be very alert and see who is 
under more pressure and then as a team we try to support we undertake some responsibilities to elevate some of the pressure which is on them so that they can carry on without being too much stretched then quran says warabitu you have also to have lots of networking and relation and connection you have to wire each of you to the entire body let me give you an example you know if there is a very strong storm <coughs> i don't know if you have been to places that there is always strong winds and storms in iran there is a particular place that we have that always lots of wind comes very heavy winds. maybe if it is a child of two years three years sometimes it can take the child sometimes you have seen a storm comes even they take cars it's so heavy and so strong how you can resist against such storms if you are just one object either non-living or living object a storm can take you away but if we are hundred i don't know thousand people and we hold hand of each other if needed also we use ropes to tie each other to each other then we become too heavy and too big for the storm to move us it would be impossible for the storm to move us mu'minin when they are connected when they are organized when they have their networks no storm no attack can move them can shake them can defeat them but if we are loose and we just act as individuals then we can be very easily attacked and destroyed quran says you mu'mineen are in need of murabata rabitu you should be connected to each other rabata means to fasten to tie one example of this is in the quran the example of the mother of musa alayhi salam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when the mother of musa had to leave baby musa into the river you know as a mother this is very difficult but allah says rabatna ala qalbha we put some ties around and inside the heart of the mother so that it's not broken in some you know countries we have this i don't know uh, in the uk i haven't seen you know in the past we had very especially you know teapots you know these teapots some of them were very expensive so when they were broken they were not sending them away or throwing them out there were people who had the speciality of using some metals and then putting everything back so they will use it and when you had these metals for support it was not breaking so it was from everywhere connected it is said that sometimes some people who were going for example to be away from city like you know village people and they didn't have such people so they used to break the teapot themselves and ask this repair to be done because then with this support is not going to break again this shows how important it is to have these support ties and connections mu'minin should be this much connected to each other warabitu wattaqullah then you have to observe allah's will with respect to everything especially what we have asked before sabr as individual sabiru as a community and rabitu 
And if you have this, you will be inshallah successful. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So, the Quran tells us that we have to be understanding ourselves as parts, as cells of one organic body. And that is the community. That is the nation which adheres to the same ideals, to the same aims and objectives. Unfortunately, my time is coming to an end now, but this was just what I wanted to say at the beginning, and inshallah, I'm sure we will benefit from other speakers and lecturers, and inshallah, uh, if Allah gives me tawfiq, at the end of the program also, I will talk further about the community and how by strengthening our relation with the community we can inshallah have a better understanding of our identity this is i think something very important thank you very much for your patience and for your attention and i would like to thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this blessing of being together and discussing this important topic and i would like also to thank all the organizers for working very hard i have been witnessing part of the uh, difficult tasks that they had may allah inshallah reward them and accept from them and may allah inshallah give them as a reward the blessing of seeing inshallah fruits coming from this event inshallah وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين